A few years ago, I had an epiphany on a Saturday morning while attending the Mega Cars and Coffee in Irvine, California, an event that grew so large that it eventually had to be shut down. After perusing literally hundreds of vehicles, everything from daily driven enthusiast fare to the latest supercars, with a car guy friend of mine who at the time worked for Toyota, we both realized that there wasn't a single Toyota or Lexus. This would seem to be a problem for those brands. Toyota president Takio Toyota wasn't there, but he would agree with that assessment, as he's on record stating that the long-term success for the Toyota and Lexus brands requires going beyond smooth, quiet, and comfortable a to b transportation. The company as a whole needs aspirational vehicles that inspire passion and cast the shadow of excellence over the two brands. In fact, Toyota-san has made it his personal mission to prevent the word boring from coexisting ever again in a sentence with Lexus. If the new LC, which stands for Luxury Coupe, is an indicator of things to come, we'd say he's well on his way to succeeding. Mere minutes into our drive of the LC 500 on the sinuous and extremely well-maintained back roads of southern Spain was all it took to have another epiphany, there's actual road texture being transmitted through the well-shaped and expertly finished steering wheel. It's a much-desired quality that has been disappearing in the wake of electrically assisted power steering and misguided neutering build as progress. Get to know this guy Al. The mission to build exciting cars could bode well for the brand's ability to court enthusiasts going forward, and it also portends good things for the new LS sedan, which will ride on a larger version of the LC's all-new front-engine, rear-wheel drive architecture, dubbed GOT L, for global architecture luxury. And the company promises an increased focus on dynamics across the lineup going forward, although that doesn't necessarily mean Lexus is aiming to be the most athletic in every segment. LC chief engineer Koji Sato was a former chassis engineer, so perhaps the high priority he places on steering isn't all that surprising. And he was utterly flabbergasted when we mentioned that other automakers, such as BMW, have told us that steering feedback has been deliberately diminished because that's what some customers want. Sato San refers to the LC as a back to basics car. Much effort was expended to nail the fundamentals, and he and his team have mostly succeeded. The front suspension is a double ball joint, both upper and lower, multi-link design very similar to Audi's latest, with the five-link setup at the rear. The opposed piston brake calipers on both axles do an excellent job of hauling the LC down from high speeds. There was much effort to reduce weight and lower the center of gravity. Engineers also cut mass at the extremities to diminish the polar moment of inertia for improved rotational response. This includes the use of aluminum for the hood, front fenders, and door skins, with the inner panels of the doors and trunk made from carbon fiber reinforced sheet molding compound, that's the random oriented fiber stuff, not the neatly entwined weave. There's also an optional carbon fiber roof, with the weave. On the exterior, only the deep drawer rear fenders are rendered in steel. Underneath. The front suspension is forged aluminum, and the front shock towers are cast aluminum. Still, the LC500 comes in at a rather heavy 4,300 pounds, according to Lexus, with the LC500H hybrid adding an additional 150. That roughly matches the slightly larger and less sophisticated V8-powered BMW 650i. And those pounds are also front-heavy with a claimed 54-46% front-to-rear weight distribution for the V8 and 52-48 for the hybrid. Nevertheless, the LC feels alive when pushed hard on the road. We've already mentioned the steering, and although its effort is on the light side at highway speeds, it imparts a natural confidence when hustling down wriggling roads. The suspension is tied down, there's little body roll, and the LC transitions athletically, Although a variable ratio rack and rear wheel steering are available together as an optional bundle, we'd skip them, as the base setup felt great. Another strike against the so-called active steering is the way the LC's rear end brakes loose at the limit, which feels unnatural, although the LC isn't a track car, nor do we think it should be, Lexus had us understeer the LC around a circuit anyway. 
It wasn't that the LC was uncontrollable, but we suspect its variable steering hardware had something to do with its lack of your response communication as the rear end reaches its limits. We didn't get the chance to drive a car without it on track to verify that theory. A very different hybrid approach, mimic the non-hybrid. We should note that these dynamic comments and compliments apply equally to the hybrid model as well, because Lexus has taken the unusual approach of engineering the LC hybrid to be as similar as possible to the conventional car. Both LCs wear the same 20 or 21-inch wheels and Michel and Pilot Super Sport or Bridgestone Potenza S001 tires, no efficiency-oriented low rolling resistance rubber here and the hybrid retains the prominent tachometer and the large magnesium shift paddles. The hybrid powertrain has been substantially altered to mimic the conventional 10-speed automatic in the V8, too, and it starts with the basic building blocks from the GS450H, an Atkinson Cycle 3.5-liter V6 connected to the typical Toyota, Lexus hybrid system, with two electric motor, generators and a planetary gear set acting as a pseudo-CVT. The V6 was chosen instead of the 438 horsepower V8 hybrid hardware from the LS600H so that, unlike the LS, the hybridized LC would have a meaningful fuel economy benefit. The LC's hybrid system, however, has a 4-speed automatic transmission appended to the back of it. This allows for more electric assist at lower vehicle speeds and it enables the system to operate with the engine off at higher speeds of up to 87 miles per hour but here's how it gets 10 speeds, the original CVT-S part of the equation jumps among three fixed ratios, which are then combined with the first three downstream gears from the conventional automatic to create ratios 1 through 9. 10 gear uses the final ratio from the automatic and is the only time the hybrid bits operate as a CVT. Combined power output is 354 horsepower, an increase of 16 compared with the GS450H, although 9 horsepower of that comes from revisions to the V6. For a deeper look at the hybrid system, head here. Oral fixation. In addition to the steering, Lexus nailed the booming V8 sound. Powered by the same 5.0-liter V8 that's in the GSF and the RCF, the LC 500s is up a few horsepower, to 471. With the help of a tube running between the intake manifold and the firewall plus flaps and the exhaust, but no electronically produced noise, the cabin is positively filled with nigh-on perfect V8 frequencies. The sound swells appropriately with engine speed but isn't overbearingly loud. The march toward turbocharging has made achieving memorable sound more difficult, which makes the LC500's naturally aspirated drawer even more of a standout. Playing this V8 Opus is a rapid-fire new i 10 speed automatic. It's not as quick shifting as a dual-clutch gearbox, and we also experienced a few low-speed shift bobbles, but gear swaps are about as swift as they come for conventional automatics, and upshifts are punctuated with a satisfying pop from the exhaust. Paddle requested downshifts, too, are exceptionally swift. Unfortunately, sound is where the hybrid loses the plotline. Unlike the V8, it does employ electronic enhancement, and its artificial moaning is further amplified in Sport S Plus mode. It's also down 117 horsepower compared with the V8. Does anyone looking to spend roughly $100,000 on a two-door fashion statement care about the LC 500 ditches potential 50% fuel economy benefit if it means sacrificing the V8's sound and performance? Lexus claims that the transmission arrangement makes the hybrid only a few tenths of a second slower to 60 miles per hour, but at higher speeds, the performance gap felt considerably wider. Plus, the hybrid pseudo 10 speed slurs its shifts, which aren't nearly as satisfying as those of the V8S automatic. And dev only range, as is typical for Toyota and Lexus hybrids, is still minuscule, with the slightest prod of the throttle often causing the engine to fire up. So, where does the LC fit in? There's not that much dimensional variety in the luxury coupe world. 
After all, the wheelbase in the Mercedes-Benz S-Class Coupe is just 4.1 inches longer than that of the two sizes smaller C-Class Coupe. At 113.0 inches, the Lexus LC's wheelbase roughly splits those of the Benz's. However, its overall length is much closer to that of the C-Class and more than 10 inches shorter than the S, which helps to explain the LC's paltry trunk space. At 5 cubic feet, it's half that of the big Mercedes. And Lexus says that back seat space is not a concern for potential customers. The design certainly isn't as classically beautiful as that of the S-Class Coupe, but the aggressively creased design language that seems hopelessly overdone on the Lexus RX crossover works here, thanks in no small part to the Coupe's excellent proportions. The interior design is adventurous, with flowing sweeps over the door panels and through the center console. The bass seats are heavily bolstered, and the optional micro suede trimmed upgrade versions are even more so. But we wonder if the latter might fit a little too tightly for luxury coupe clientele, and they have surprisingly few adjustments, no bolster or thigh control adjustments and only two-way lumber. The LC is a more dynamic grand touring alternative to the S-Class or 6 Series coupes, but it's not nearly as dynamically fabulous as a Porsche 911, and it's roughly 1,000 pounds heavier. Lexus says it expects to sell roughly 4,800 LC cars annually in the US, of which only 20% will be the hybrid, once the car reaches dealers next spring. That estimate may be high, which is good, because then the LCs you'll see at your local cars and coffee almost certainly will pack the V8. 8.